Start by removing your passenger side wheel and this plastic cover. I also removed the bumper because it makes it so much easier to access everything. Loose tension on the tensioner pulley. Unbolt the tensioner pulley. And remove the serpentine belt. You will remove a lot of bolts and hex nuts during this install. So reinstalling the bolt whenever possible is a good idea. Loose tension on the power steering tensioner pulley. Unbolt the tensioner pulley and remove the power steering belt. You can start unbolting the lower timing cover. It's held on by several 10mm bolts and 12 and 14mm bolts. You will need to remove this tensioner pulley bracket. Reinstall your bolts so you don't lose them. You can now access this 14mm bolt that holds the lower timing cover. Remove the crankshaft pulley. It should come straight out after removing this single bolt, but sometimes it's really stuck on there. Tapping it with a rubber mallet around the sides helps break it loose. Remove the lower timing cover. Mine is broken, so I'm going to need to replace it because the timing covers protect the timing belt from debris that could shorten its lifespan. Unbolt the Ingalls torque damper. And the power steering reservoir. In order to remove the motor mount, you will need to jack up the engine. A piece of wood between the oil pan and jack prevents the oil pan from getting damaged. Unbolt the two 17mm hex nuts from the motor mount and remove the Ingalls torque damper. You now have access to remove the 17mm bolt from the motor mount. Remove the three 14mm bolts that hold the motor mount to the frame. Unbolt this 10mm ground and you can now remove the motor mount. Remove these plastic clips by pushing one side in with a flathead screwdriver and move the harness out of the way. Remove the upper two timing covers. They're held on by several 10mm bolts. Unbolting the four 14mm bolts that hold the motor mount bracket might be tricky because of the tight space. You may need to use different combination of tools to remove these. What I ended up doing was making my own tool because none of the ones I had worked properly. I ended up buying a 3 8 inch breaker bar so it would be long enough for me to get leverage on it and a set of sockets and cut down the 14mm socket making it shorter so it could fit. As you can see here, the tool made it super easy to work on these bolts. The removal of the motor mount bracket is tricky again because of the tight space. You have to remove the lower two bolts first and then the upper two bolts. It may take some wiggling around, but eventually it comes straight out. You can now unbolt the knock sensor. I reinstall the bolts to avoid losing them. 
you don't need to completely unclip the knock sensor, just move it out of the way. Before removing the timing belt, we have to put the engine at top dead center. We do this by manually rotating the crank and aligning all timing marks. You can now loosen up the tensioner pulley to remove the timing belt. Unbolt the auto tensioner. Immediately reinsert the bolts where you removed them from. These are the most important bolts of this install and you don't want to mix them up. You can now start unbolting the water pump. It's held on by several 12mm bolts. Once you have removed all bolts and are ready to pull out the water pump, make sure you have a bucket right below it to catch all of the coolant. A lot of coolant leaks out, but fortunately our bucket catched it all. Oh, shit. You have to remove all of the old gasket to make sure the new one creates a good seal. Don't forget to remove the rubber o-ring from the water inlet pipe and install your new one. There was a big accumulation of dirt in this area. I cleaned it out to make sure it wouldn't fall on my new timing belt. Removing the old gasket was very difficult. I had to use a wire wheel on my drill and I also had to use a wire wheel on my Dremel tool for the hard to reach areas. This is the third time I'm replacing the timing belt kit prematurely due to a coolant leak at the water pump. I've been using the Gates timing kit because it's on warranty, so I haven't had to pay for the kit the last two times. But it only lasts about 20,000 miles before it starts leaking again and that's very annoying. I should have just bought the original kit from the Mitsubishi dealership since the first time. I buy an OEM auto tensioner for the Gates kit every time I install it. So at this point the Gates kit is not even cost or time effective. I want to experiment with the Gates kit just one last time but this time I'm installing OEM water pump gasket and OEM rubber o-ring and of course the OEM auto tensioner. But I honestly recommend you guys just buy everything OEM so you don't run into any premature failure on this kit. I compared both water pump gaskets side by side and you can see that the Mitsubishi one is cut out perfectly and the Gates one isn't. I also compared the rubber o-ring side by side and the Mitsubishi one is slightly thicker, making a better seal. That might be why the Gates one leaks. It's a good idea to lubricate your rubber o-ring because it could get damaged when installing, but you can use grease because it would affect the seal. Using coolant instead works perfectly fine. The way I install the water pump is that I put the bolts on it, then the gasket, and they kind of hold each other in place. Then I carefully insert the whole assembly. Thread in all the bolts. Make sure everything is aligned correctly and then torque to spec. Install your idler and tensioner pulley. Many of my bolts had a lot of grime because of the coolant leak. I like to clean them with a wire wheel before reinstalling them. Install your auto tensioner. Before removing the timing belt, we had made sure the engine was at top dead center. The marks may have moved since then, 
So before reinstalling your timing belt, make sure all the timing marks are aligned. The way I installed my timing belt is different from the manual. I felt like the steps in the manual have a lot of room for error and I decided to go another way about it instead. I started by wrapping the timing belt around the crankshaft sprocket first and using a plastic clamp to hold it in place. It's important to note where I placed the clamp, here it won't shorten the length of the timing belt. Then take the timing belt over the idler pulley and pull it over the camshaft gear. The camshaft gears may move during the install, that's not a problem. Just align the timing marks and try to reinstall without moving the gear again. Once you have the timing belt stretched and wrapped over the camshaft gear and the timing marks aligned, you can go ahead and install a zip tie to hold it in place. Now take the timing belt under the water pump pulley and pull it hard over the other camshaft gear. If it is stretched properly, the timing belt will fall right into the grooves of the gear. Once you're able to wrap it around the camshaft gear, you can install a zip tie. I removed this cover because it got in the way when tightening the belt. Note the orientation of the little face here. The eyes should actually be to the left. So what I did was take my tensioner tool and apply pressure on it counterclockwise and it should pop right over to where you need it to be. You can now torque the timing belt to spec at 39 inch pounds and hold it there while tightening the bolt. It is difficult to keep the belt at 39 inch pounds because when you tighten the bolt by hand, it changes the tension on the timing belt. That is why I use an impact here. The bolt stays in place when the impact tightens it. Remove the pin from the auto tensioner. Do two full rotations of the timing belt and align the timing marks again. Wait at least five minutes, then check that the push rod in the auto tensioner extends within the range of 4.8 to 6 millimeters. If the push rod is not within range, make sure the timing marks are aligned Reinsert the setting pin, loosen the tensioner pulley bolt, set tension again, remove the pin, do two full timing belt rotations, and align the timing marks again. Wait at least 5 minutes, then check the push rod extension again. It must be within 4.8 to 6 millimeters. That is crucial to ensuring the timing belt is installed correctly. If you have finished and the timing marks don't align, you might need to do another rotation of the crank. If they still don't align, remove the timing belt and start all over again. If it's your first time doing this, I advise you to also read the owner's manual. Once you finally get your push rod within range and all of your timing marks align correctly, we can begin reinstalling everything back together. I started by cleaning my crank sensor because all the coolant and dirt it had on it can make it malfunction. You may mix some bolts around. A trick I use is that I check how much they protrude and swap them around until they have equal lengths. I put the motor mount bracket into place with the top two bolts already on and then I inserted the bottom two bolts. Thread the bolts by hand first, and now we can use our new tool to tighten them. Now it's time to install our lower timing cover.
Some debris fell on my timing belt, so I used this can of compressed air to clean it all out. Reinstall the tensioner bracket. Reinstall your power steering tensioner pulley. Reinstall the AC tensioner pulley. Reinstall the crankshaft pulley. Reinstall your power steering belt. If the belt doesn't fit, loosen up the power steering tensioner. Retighten the tensioner. Make sure you bolt down the power steering pulley. Install the serpentine belt. Tighten down your AC tensioner pulley. And remember to bolt down your AC tensioner pulley. At this point, I decided to turn on my engine to check that everything was working properly, because if it isn't, well, there's no need to finish the install with a blown engine. Reinstall the oil filter cover. My upper timing covers were very dirty and all this dirt could fall on the timing belt, so I cleaned them before reinstalling. Don't forget to bolt on this bracket that holds the harness in place. This is one of the few bolts that you actually need an impact for because there's no way to hold down the other side. We can now install the motor mount. Raise and lower the engine as needed in order to align the bolt. Install the middle bolt that holds your motor mount to the bracket. Reinstall your Ingalls torque damper if you have one. Don't forget the washers that space it out. Thread the hex nuts by hand first. Torque to spec. Thank you. 
install the three 14 millimeter bolts that hold the motor mount to the chassis. Bolt down the 10 millimeter ground. Reinstall the power steering reservoir. These two hex nuts that hold down the Engels torque damper and your strut bar are very delicate. These are two of the few bolts that I found on this car that do not like to be over tightened. I recommend you use your torque wrench on these and torque to spec. That pretty much sums it up for this install. I hope it helps you guys out. Please remember to leave a like on the video to support the channel. Thanks guys.